Hey guys, Mike here from TA Outdoors. About to do a catch and cook. Just got the fire going. We'll come to the catch part in a minute. Uh, but I've just, I just did a bow drill and I thought I'd talk you through what woods I used. So, pine hearth board. Where I've only got three holes being used at the moment. I was going to use, uh, I was going to use a new hole there. But I figured this one had a couple more left in it and thankfully it did actually. So that's, that's pine. Spindle was a hazel spindle. And I judge it usually by extending my thumb and my baby finger out. And that's usually the length of my spindles. It's a little bit thin to what I normally use, but it worked. So I was quite surprised actually. I usually go a bit thicker than that, but I thought I'd try something a bit thinner. Thankfully it worked. So yeah, pine, hazel, uh, and a birch, just a piece of birch for the bow with some paracord. I don't really like using paracord for bow drill cordage. It shreds usually after about three three or four bow drills usually it will start to fray and, and shred bank line is pretty awesome for it um i do like using bank line but it is expensive stuff it's not it's not cheap but again you, you pay for what you get for really i just use some birch bark for the ember pan you can see the burn mark there so once i got that ember going i then tapped that into the tinder bundle itself which is just dried grass and that way i get to save this and keep this for fire lighting another time i, I could also just scrape it with a knife to make some birch dust and light fire with a ferrocerium rod or a ferro rod. And I've done that plenty of times before in my videos. The other thing was, I think it's sycamore bearing block, which a subscriber made me fill. Uh, he turned this on his, on his lathe. And yeah, it's really good because of the bearing in there that spins super easily if this will focus at all. That, that bearing there spins really easily. So it just allows for a lot less friction on this end of the spindle. This can spin really easily then, because the you want you want the least amount of resistance on this part of the the spindle. You want that to be able to spin as easily as possible. So by having that bearing in there, it actually it actually almost it's like a lubricant. It just spins for it. There's no resistance there at all, so it makes it you know it, it'll make this spin as easily as possible. Use this spindle again because it's blackened up. I can just scrape off the black charred wood with my knife. And then that, that spindle is ready to go. I've probably got, I've got a good amount of, uh, I didn't take much material off that tool, so I, I can keep using that. And obviously it's nice and dry, so this can just stay as my kit now. It can be like a bow drill kit. I make these quite small, my uh, hearth boards or hearth board. I, I, I like to make them small so it's nice and compact for the backpack. The downside is obviously I won't get as many burn holes in them, but that's why I'm using a thinner spindle so that I take up less, less space on the hearth board itself. So there's loads of different, loads of different ways you can do this. You know, you can have big, wide, fat ones of these. I could go double the thickness and then uh, do some, some more burn holes the other side. With this one, sadly, I probably won't be able to get one this side because they're too, it's too narrow. I should have made it a little bit, a little bit wider, but I made it pretty neat and square because I spent some time doing it. But I've got another one, two, three, maybe four more holes there and I'll get three or four out of each hole probably maybe even five depending on how much pressure I put down so yeah that's essentially my bow drill kit these are obviously nice and compact and small the bow is pretty big I don't really need a bow that big I could go up to here you can even use a straight stick as a bow I've used that before that's not very portable I would have preferred to have a smaller bow but the basics of the fire lighting material the ember pan you can use anything those spindle hearth board and bearing block look how small that is that can just all go together, literally like in my in my paracord case if I wanted to. So it just shows, you know, you, there's loads of different ways of doing it. Maybe I'll do some videos soon on uh, on bow drills, maybe a little tutorial. Uh, but yeah, good fun to practice. Obviously, it's a lot of effort to light a fire this way. But you know, it doesn't. It, it's it's wilderness skills. It's it's good skills to learn. It's good to have that knowledge, and it's good to know as well that you do have those skills, so that in if a survival situation were to occur, you could apply those, that knowledge and apply that skill and get fire going. Obviously a lighter is gonna do it way quicker. So, uh, I've got the fire burning now, I've got some birch sort of sticks on there, might get some bigger logs to begin with because I need that to burn down because this is a catch and cook. That's the fish that I'm gonna cook. It's called a black bream. Arguably one of the best eating fish here in the UK, in British waters, that's for sure. I believe there are, you can catch them all over Europe. Summertime is when you catch them. Again, we're gonna to get to the, 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 the catch part and the prep part in a minute. 
I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is just, it's only a small in there, but I'm just gonna shove some herbs and things like that in here, in the cavity, and just cook it straight on the fire. Cause it's only a small fish, so there's not sort of much meat to it. So it makes sense to cook this whole and not, uh, and not, you know, fillet it. Because if I did fillet it, it just wouldn't be as nice. So got my, I usually process food with just my Openel stainless steel. This is number eight. Uh, and I like the stainless steel version because a lot of the time I'm cutting lemons and, and I'll use it on sea fish and things like that. This is a sea fish that's so salty. It will rust, rust a carbon steel blade a lot easier. So lemon, as standard with most fish. Um, it's, he's only small, so I'm only gonna cut a couple of slices and take this lemon back home. Let's do maybe three. He's not got a huge cavity. Thyme, here, fresh thyme, and some chives. And what I'm gonna do is actually just chop these chives up a bit smaller. Just, just crush them up like that, get that flavor out. Shouldn't be cutting on tin foil, I know, but. With the thyme, I'm just gonna pull off the tips. I would use the whole plant usually, but because it's only a tiny cavity in this fish, I'm not gonna be able to get all of this in there. So, look, that's like, that's it. That's all this cavity is, so. Cram in some uh, chives. Get some thyme in there. It's gonna taste good. Lemon slices, just a couple if I can get them in. There's not much room in there, but, the other thing I'm going to do, put a bit more chives on top of that lemon. And then as well, a little pot of pepper and salt. And I'm going to salt this fish. It's already a salty fish anyway, but so I won't need loads. But just a little bit in the cavity. And the sprinkling on both sides. A bit more on the sides. A bit of pepper. You can season it with what you want really guys, it's kind of up to you. Olive oil. I don't wanna This is a big bottle, I don't want it to go everywhere, but sprinkle some oil on there. Olive oil. Now I've still got the rest of these, so sprinkle that on the fish. Tuck some underneath as well. That's all all add into the flavour. It's all gonna cook inside. We're basically baking this on the campfire. Try and completely seal it. Christmas cracker style. You can probably cook that for about 15 minutes, maybe 10 minutes each side. She is looking good. It's gonna be tasty. I don't want it directly on the flames. While that's cooking down there, uh, I'm gonna show you some footage now. Dad, he, he went and caught these the other day. He was making a video for TA Fishing, our other YouTube channel. And uh, he went and caught quite a few of these black breams. So I'm gonna show you some footage now of how he had to catch these fish. Uh, and he also uh, preps them on the boat as well. He's done a one way of cleaning them, but there's also another way that we filmed back at home as well. So you're gonna see, you know, a bit of graphic content coming up. So heads up for those who are, you know, offended by that sort of thing. It's coming up your way now. You might wanna look away, or alternatively, if you wanna learn something, carry on watching. Then we'll come back here. This will be cooked. We'll enjoy it and we'll chill out and enjoy time in the woods. I'm gonna leave that one down here. It's on light drag. Somebody watch out the corner of their eye for me. So I just had a hammering bite on it. So let me think what I need. I need some coralline, which is here on a hand winder. I made it out of plywood. See a grip as well. Quite artistic, actually. Yes, there's a fish. Look, 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 look. Oh, God, I've got a tangle as well. <laughs> oh, there we go. I don't even need the chum tube. I don't need the ground bait bait dropper. Good God, there's anglers and danglers. This is, I'll tell you what, I've got to get up for this one. This is a good black bream. It's really ripping me around. My God, don't say it's going to be a great finish of the day. Look at the bend in this rod. This is where the black bream are great fighters. 
Mike wants one for his catch and cook. This is not a bad fish, man. This is not a bad fish. God, I haven't even got the ground bait down yet. Oh, what? Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. I'm going to swing, net it, Graham, net it. No, 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 the naughty one says swing it. Look at that bream, boys. <laughs> Been here about 3.5 minutes and it's a clonker. I'm hopefully you can see this here. Look at the colours in the top there. I'm hoping you can see this. Iridescent colours. There's the squid. I'm pretty sure that one's good sizeable. So I think it's... And he's unhooked himself. Be very careful of the spines. Different type of swim feeder. All the lead weight is at the base there. So that should sit nicely. I'm cramming it full of all my mushed up bits and bobs. Freezer clear out. I'll tell you what, you wouldn't want me making the sandwiches, would you, tonight? No. I'll probably stay out so late, I won't have any sandwiches. Let's lower this one down. Oh, not a great big piece of wee. Please go away and leave me. Got one on the swim feeder. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Don't know how big he is, but he's going pretty well. He might, might have my other line. There we go. Black bream. Hopefully you can see it. Here, people, is a swim feeder. And here is a black bream. Here, I'll show you, are the spines. Now, fish like snappers have got the same spines. So anybody around the world is sort of, and rough scaled fish like this, they want cleaning. So I'm going to put this in the water, give it a wash off first, just like this. Gets a bit of the slime off it. I've got it on my bait board. A sharp filleting knife. Ouch. There's the spines, there's spines everywhere. And just start a nick just here. And what I like to do is just put the fish's head in the corner so you're cutting away from yourself. And it's tough between these two fins there. Just cut those out like this. Now you can bake these, fry them, there's a variety of way and apparently baking is the way. So when you open it up just put your hand in there. They have quite a small body cavity. You can rip out the main digestive tract. Go right in and pull as much as you can out here. Now be very careful with the knife sharp. So I'm just going to go in, I'm going to nick, I'm going to call it a gullet. All this stuff is good chum. This is good ground bait for other fish. Do not waste it, I am still fishing. So, you can take the gills out if you want. Now just here you'll see that sack. You want to pop that sack there, like this. And then just basically bleed that fish. Now, my tip is, you do not want to put it in the water and drop it. It's a good eating fish, this one. So go in through the gills like this. This is just my way of doing it. Look, I dare say there's some black bream expert ready to hit the keyboard. I go in through there, so I've got it locked in my fingers. I'm not getting spiked in the water. And then you can look, you can just wash all those backbone blood particles out. Now, the other thing you got to do when you get home, you can do it. I could do it now, I'm not going to. The tide's just died, and I probably want to get back. This is full of scales, so you're going to scale this fish, but I'm going to do it after I've frozen it, because I've found once they've been frozen and thawed out, they're easier to scale. So you don't want to cook it really with all the scales on and get it in somebody's food. There, if I show you, are all the spikes. Just there. So you're going to scrape these off. Let's get this one in the cooler with his pal, which is even bigger over here. He's been all cleaned out. Get them in the cooler, and now I can get them back, get them in the fridge or freezer. Keep them in the, in the top there. A little bit of bait left, not much. There's not much coolness left in there's a nice fish that was a nice that's a nice eater a couple of nice fish in there for eating one for the camp cooking camp catch and cook or whatever you call it Mike calls it and the other one for wifey and me right next phase we'll be thawing it out ready for cooking okay to so show you uh, about the descaling on scaly fish like this I have gutted it on the boat as you saw earlier I just cling filmed it put it in the fridge to keep it chilled last night and now I'm going to take the scales off it. I like to give them a bit of a, a rinse here because that gets any slipperiness off them a little bit like this. 
in fresh water. Now the thing with scales, they go in a ping. There's no way around it. You can use the sharp blade or you can use the back of the blade like this to get underneath them. Look, just ping those scales off. They go everywhere. So I recommend doing it outside rather than inside. And you can, I use a blade, but you don't want to cut into the fish. As I said, watch the spikes. As you can see, I didn't watch the spike there. Lesson learned. A little bit of marinade there for whoever's going to eat this one. <laughs> right, we're having spiked my thumb. I think I should, I should be taking my own advice here and just popping those scales off like this. Then you won't have any trouble, and of course, You've got to get it in the oven if you're going to bake it or you're going to fry it whatever you're going to do if you're frying it and these stick out they're obviously going to go into the frying pan and i have seen other people do this look they just snip those fins off now listen i'm no chef this is just the way i'm doing it it's all edible food but if you tidy it up like this first it does make life quite a bit easier that's it now just dip those loose scales in here and then we'll do the other side. Having scraped it all off, get it in the fresh water. Now you can take the head off this fish. If you're baking or cooking, to be honest, there's lots of juices in here that help enhance this meat. And the next phase with that, look, lovely and smooth now. That's ready for oven, frying pan, baking, whatever you want to do with it. In hindsight, I should have scored the fish a bit. I think that would have, would have got the juices cooking a bit more, but I'm just going to sort this fire out and try and uh, break up the coals a bit, ready to flip it over. I hope you enjoyed that little catch bit, the catch segment. Essentially what I'm doing here is keeping the fire going this side and then with a stick just lifting the fish up and, and raking the coals from underneath over to this fish side so that this is my cooking side here where these coals are and that way that, that fish cooks without kind of burning it's probably burnt a bit I can see it's the flames burnt it but just by doing it that way it helps it to cook a bit more evenly and cook through rather than burn so keep my fire going it's it's like a barbecue like when you have barbecues you cook it you usually keep the fire going on one side of the barbecue and cook your food your meat on the sort of uh, coal side and then when it's let the flames die down there and scrape some more coals across that's just how I cook personally on fires a lot when I'm cooking like in tin foil like this move the coals across they're all hot enough even though they, there's no flame there they're very hot and that way it's helping to bake it a bit more rather than like burn it. So now I'm going to rotate it. As you can see, I did burn it a bit, but that's what the tin foil is there for as well. To stop it, stop it kind of burning. All these, all these small bit, these small coals, they're all giving off a lot of heat. You know, I've got the glove on, but even keeping my glove there is really hot. So these little coals here are definitely hot enough to cook this fish. So I'll give it another maybe seven, eight minutes on that side, and then turn it around. She should be done. Uh, you can see the burn marks where I've probably perhaps cooked it a bit too much. But you know what? It's going to go down all the same. Either way, it's getting eaten. <laughs> Definitely cooked it too much. Mmm. That's so good. That is so good. Got to watch out for bones because obviously it's a whole fish. But 
something else. That is really nice. You can see how it's one of the best, one of the best eating fish here in the UK. I know people are going to say, uh, don't cook in aluminium foil because it's bad for you. There's, there's so many things out there that are bad for you. You know, it's a case of just doing it in moderation. I'm not cooking in aluminium foil every night. If I cooked in it every night, I probably would get ill with something. But do things in moderation, you know? It's, it's just, it's been done for years. People have cooked in aluminium for years. And yes, there is a link with Alzheimer's and aluminium. But, I, you know, I think if you do it, I personally do it in moderation. So I'll leave it up to you guys. I'm just enjoying the fish and being out here in the woods. Oh, this is so good. But I did invite Dad on this uh, cook part, but actually he's doing some paperwork, he said, I think. So you're missing out, Dad. He's actually got some anyway for TA Fishing to cook up, so you'll probably see that on his channel soon. Go and subscribe. Probably see the fire there. Just letting that go out now. I am at the, the cabin camp where our little pallet wood cabin is. I'm in the tiki bar now. But um, I'm only here for a swift visit just to cook this fish because I've got to edit this video and get it up for you guys because the next video is a big one. A good one. It's a good one. Mmm. This is good. I'm getting there. Ugh, just pull the bone out a bit like that so I can get underneath. That is the the spine, the backbone, the rib cage of a black bream. You can see these big old bones here, nice and easy to see. The skin is lovely and salty. Not as crunchy as I'd like it, but look at that. There we go. That's how it should look when you've finished it. In the belly, that is. Tiny little head to them. But good fish nonetheless content and satisfied that was awesome so um next video i know this is a bit bit of a filler video guys but next video is going to be awesome without giving too much away there's going to be let me put it simply deer cooking camping that's all i'm going to give you Next video is going to be a good one, guys, I promise you. So thanks very much, guys, for watching this Catch and Cook episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please hit the subscribe button if you did enjoy it. And also, do tick the little bell notification icon because a lot of you have been saying you're not getting email notifications when I've uploaded a video. Uh, the other thing to check is, is pop back to my channel every couple of days. That way you won't miss an upload because I know I'm getting so many emails of people saying they're missing stuff and they're missing content. So just, you know, I try to upload every, you know, at least every week, maybe twice a week. Just come back every two days or so and just check the channel to see if there's a new video up in case you miss it. Don't forget, subscribe to my dad's channel where there's lots of this uh, called TA Fishing. Pop some links in the description to that. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you for all your support. And I'll see you soon in the next video, which is going to be a good one. Cheers, guys.